Model-turned-actress Anna Nicole Smith was an iconic head-turner from the moment she catapulted to stardom in the 1990s, having appeared in a number of popular ads for the Guess fashion brand. She was also 1993's Playmate of the Year, and her rise to fame was followed by acting roles, as well as a stint in a reality TV series. The star from a small town in Texas was born Vicki Lynn Hogan in 1967, and she grew up poor. When she was just 17 years old, she married her first husband, Billy Smith, who was a cook at the fried chicken restaurant where she worked. They had a son named Daniel in 1986, but the marriage ended in divorce. Smith's big break in show business came after she sent photos of herself to Hugh Hefner, a move that led to her appearance in Playboy magazine. Next, she transitioned into the film world, nabbing a few roles in movies such as Naked Gun 33 and a Third, The Final Insult, and The Hudsucker Proxy. As her star rose, Smith was compared to the likes of classic beauties such as Marilyn Monroe and Jane Mansfield. She also made headlines when she married 89-year-old oil tycoon J. Howard Marshall II in 1994. I went over to see him, and he got a little twinkle in his eyes, and he asked me to dance for him. Marshall died soon after the wedding and Smith spent years waging court battles for a share in his estate. In the early 2000s, Smith's career moved toward reality television and product endorsements. She remained a tabloid fixture, something she actually enjoyed, even once telling the Washington Post, I love the paparazzi. They take pictures and I just smile away. I've always liked attention. I didn't get very much growing up and I always wanted to be noticed. Her fondness for becoming tabloid fodder continued in 2006, when she gave birth to a daughter named Danny Lynn. This was followed by widespread media speculation over Danny Lynn's parentage, as a number of men claimed to be the father. A paternity test would eventually confirm Larry Burkhead, Smith's ex-boyfriend, as the father. Smith seemed unstoppable at the height of her stardom, and for more than a decade, that held true until tragedy struck. In September of 2006, her 20-year-old son Daniel died of an accidental drug overdose. The following February, in 2007, the 39-year-old star was found unconscious in her room at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino near Hollywood, Florida. She was later pronounced dead at a local hospital, and the results of an autopsy the following month determined she had died of an accidental prescription drug overdose. The autopsy revealed that Smith had nine prescription drugs in her system, as well as a non-prescription drug and several supplements. When Anna Nicole Smith died, some suggested that she was so heartbroken over her son's death that she took her own life. But Seminole Police Chief Charlie Tiger soon put that rumor to rest. At a news conference announcing Smith's autopsy result, he said, We are convinced, based on extensive review of the evidence, that this case is an accidental overdose with no other criminal element present. Still, the sheer number of drugs in her system was hard to ignore. She had ingested a lethal drug cocktail that included a dozen different medications, either before or at the time of her death. Joshua Perper, the Broward County medical examiner at the time, also confirmed that, in addition to the prescription and non-prescription medications, Smith had three antidepressant or anxiolytic drugs in her system. Toxicology reports also found human growth hormone and chloral hydrate, a sleeping drug. The combination of this massive amount of drugs essentially shut down her respiration and circulation systems. Perper said, she didn't suffer, she went to sleep. But the most disturbing fact about Smith's death is that her autopsy revealed she had been receiving shots of either a human growth hormone or B12 vitamins, prescription drugs, or some combination of the three. And when a needle punctured an abscess in her buttock, bacteria was allowed into her bloodstream that caused a high fever shortly before her death. Perper believes if Smith had received treatment for the fever and infection, she probably would have lived. If you or anyone you know is struggling with addiction issues, help is available. Visit the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration website or contact SAMHSA's National Helpline at 1-800-662-HELP-4357.